This is Live Well Talk on co-sleeping. I'm Dr. Dustin Arnold, Chief Medical Officer at Union Point Health, St. Luke's Hospital. Joining me for today's episode is Dr. John Sevening, a pediatrician with Union Point Clinic Pediatrics, Hiawatha, to discuss the practice of parents co-sleeping with their baby, why it's dangerous, and what parents can do to sleep near their newborn without putting him or her in harm's way. Dr. Sevening, welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me. Um, how long have you been in town? Oh, 90, 1996. Wow. I so my residency in, from 93 to 96 and came back then. That's uh, so 20. I, I, I was yeah. told there'd be no math, Dustin. <laughs> this, yes, there's no math on the podcast. Um, well, welcome. And we're glad you're here today uh, to speak about this. But start with what, what is the definition of co sleeping with a newborn? So, co sleeping is. As the name might suggest, it's just a parent, usually a parent, but it does include twins, triplets. We really don't want anybody else sleeping with the baby, uh, whether it's a bed, uh, couch, recliner. We just really want that baby in its own space, nice firm surface with not really anything else in it, no pillows, no blankets, none of the baby protectors yeah. that we used to have probably yeah, around the when, crib that when we had kids yeah i, I mean I, I think people uh you, know, you you assume the baby's gonna be more comfortable with the the quilt that grandma made and sure. the blunt pillow but but that's not true uh well i can't comment on whether they're more comfortable or not but i can sure tell you they're going to be more safe without them without them so what what co-sleep in itself is What's the danger there? I mean, the obvious, the possible suffocation? That's pretty much it. So, you know, parent falls asleep too. You know, they're comforting the baby. They're nursing the baby. Mom, you know, maybe doing that. Maybe dad does a bottle feeding while they're in bed or couch. And, you know, when you're a new parent, uh, the young baby, you tend to be sleep deprived yeah. chronically. So, you know, you fall asleep. I'm sure I was guilty of doing that with a baby in my lap or in my arms at one point or another. So, um, you know, 99% of the time, it, everything goes fine, obviously. Everybody wakes up and is fine, but we want to eliminate that small chance that, you know, something bad could happen. Uh, pr- prior to going on with the podcast, you, you had mentioned the Back to Sleep campaign uh, in the 1990s and the effect that it had on sudden infant death syndrome. Tell us what the Back to Sleep campaign was. Uh, so in the is. well in the early '90s, the AP came out with a back to sleep program to try and cut down on the cases of SIDS. The you know the uh, issue there was uh, I think probably 70, 80 percent, if I remember my numbers right at the time. Babies at the time were uh, sleeping on their tummies, um, and they thought there was a correlation, which there certainly was a pretty strong correlation between that and SIDS death in babies. And after the back to sleep campaign was started, the number dropped pretty significantly, but uh, obviously that number is not zero. So now we're looking at, you know, what other kind of modifiable factors are there to help reduce uh, really more probably correct term now for this is sudden uh, unexplained infant death or um more from suffocation, those kind of things. There's still going to be issues with babies, uh, you know, preemies. There's you know, there's multiple factors, I guess, that kind of go into SIDS. Does, and, 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 and does that, that put at higher risk if they're premature? Yeah, premature babies, um, babies with uh, some you know issues with genetic syndrome, certain genetic syndromes. There's cardiac issues, long QT syndrome. Um, Probably several others I'm forgetting off the top of my sure, head right now. Sure. Um, you know, lack of prenatal care plays a risk for it. Uh, single moms play a risk for it. Um, kind of your whether tip- mom uses alcohol, uh, other illicit drugs, that plays a risk S- in it. So with the co-sleeping and the the the, the issue of perhaps suffix, so I'm just going to use my adult internal medicine brain. So the baby, uh, the infant. Uh, becomes hypercarbic, CO2 builds in the blood, and they're just not strong enough to push themselves away from that where right. where you someone older would wake up and push away. Right. And that so that's where the that's the underlying 
pathology. That's really. the big issue. I mean, yeah. if you look at the numbers, the big, uh, the highest rates for uh, SIDS or suffocation kind of related issues in that scenario are uh, really three months and under. Three months. But that was my next question. What was we that? all, you know, babies, just like all of us older people come in different sizes too. And, you know, there's going to be some developmental issues where, again, with preemies where they might not be quite as strong as what a term baby would be. Right. Um, but, you know, three months is really the big risk zone. Um, but, you know, we kind of make sure six months for sure, uh, a year, the numbers start dropping. But every now and then, you know, a one or two year old could have an uh, issue in the right circumstances. So, right. So really, you know, the recommendation is, you know, baby sleeps alone in a, on that firm surface uh, really until that first year for sure even in like we really want them in parents rooms um most most people will say for that first six months um after six months between six months 12 months usually i'm kind of like the parent can sort of choose what they want to do at that point but if they're comfortable with baby kind of transitioning to its own room at that stage then that would that would be fine by by my recommendations. So, uh, but you know, you talk to somebody else, they might you know, be a little bit more adamant, stay in that, you know, stay in parents' room until uh, that one year mark, but still always, you know, in their own bed, on their own surface. So, in a firm surface on their yep. back. Yeah. Well, that's an easy recommendation to make, I guess. Uh, it, um, and then you transition to they're three years old and your wife is getting in an argument with the three-year-old why they need to go back to their room. Um, and if you're me, I'm just like, okay, just everybody go to bed. But uh, that's that maybe that might be a different podcast. To- yeah, there's, uh, you know, when does when is it okay to kind of sleep or have that older kiddo? Um, you know, I would say never, but, uh, you know, there's times when you're, as a parent, you know, if you have a toddler, you don't even know they've, yeah, climbed you just into wake up with you. a foot you in just your wake face. And yeah, you roll over and you're like, oh, there's something there. Um, so, I mean, in a perfect world, you know, I always usually recommend to our parents if they come in and try to kind of figure out what they're upset about. Is it, you know, we just need a glass of water? Was there a storm? Do they have a nightmare? You know, if we can get them back to their own bed, that's that's ideal. Well, this has been excellent advice uh, and firm surface on their back. Um, in the parents' room, at least till six months, and perhaps maybe the first year, depending on yeah. who recommends. I think if you it. look at the the recommendations, it kind of get a little blurry in that six to twelve month range. But um, you know, it really kind of depends. If you're breastfeeding, probably you know in your in the parents' room, um, bottle fed baby probably is going to be sleeping through the night pretty consistently by six months, and will probably be ready to transition to their own own room at that point. What, and no, what? no pillows with the older kids until about age two. Age two, no pillows until age two. Yeah, good advice. Uh, thank you again for joining me and sharing about the dangers of co-sleeping and sudden infant death syndrome. And we've provided parents with some helpful advice. Once again, this was Dr. John Sevening, a pediatrician with UniPoint Clinic Pediatrics Hiawatha. To learn more about pediatric care, visit UniPoint.org. Thank you for listening. To Live Well Talk on. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your family, friends, neighbors, strangers about our podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, be well.